Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your GIS News for Thursday, April 4. Thousands of Jamaican nationals are set to benefit from a two-year compensation scheme established by the British government for members of the Windrush generation whose legal rights to live in the United Kingdom came under threat in 2018. The Windrush generation refers to immigrants who arrived in the UK between 1948 and 1971 from Jamaica and other Caribbean countries to address labor shortages. Many of them had arrived as children on their parents' passports, and although they have lived in Britain for many decades, they never formally became British citizens. Without documentation to prove their status, many were faced with loss of employment and emotional distress, as well as an inability to access housing, education and public health care. Yesterday, UK Home Secretary Sajid Javid announced in London that those adversely affected by the issue would be given compensatory payments. In Kingston, British High Commissioner to Jamaica Asif Ahmad revealed that the compensations would be accompanied by a personal letter of apology from the UK government. I knew that the day would come when we would announce the compensation, but no amount of money will ever undo the injustice or the pain or the hurt or damage, not to just to individuals, to their families, and the consequences will live with them forever. But this goes some way towards redressing those uh, considerations, uh, but I hope that what will accompany the compensation will also be taken in the intended way. High Commissioner Ahmad says that with the help of the Jamaican government, they have been able to track down thousands of persons, 3,600 of whom have had their British citizenship afforded to them. The Home Office has also set up a website where persons can find out more about the compensation scheme. They can also utilize the free phone line to the UK to get more information. Claims will be accepted via hard copy and email sent to Windrush Compensation Scheme at homeoffice.gov.uk. Government will be spending $1.2 billion to create an iconic public attraction and entertainment zone in the resort city of Montego Bay. Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett says the design for the entertainment zone is expected before the end of this month. We have completed the work for the preparation to create the design, and I'm waiting on the UDC to deliver that design to me. We have actually paid for the design already, and hopefully I get it before the 10th of April. That would be the design for the government campus, which will host and house the first and most important performing arts center in Montego Bay, St. James. The tourism minister says the art centre will be built on the grounds of the National Water Commission. Adjacent to it will be a new artisan village, fisherman village, waterfront and several entertainment centres. We are now going to create another gastronomic delight right in the city centre of Montego Bay to make Montego Bay the most iconic entertainment city in all of the Caribbean. Minister Bartlett was speaking in Montego Bay during the official renaming ceremony of Gloucester Avenue hip strip to Jimmy Cliff Boulevard. The international reggae icon was given the honor for helping to bring fame to Jamaica's rich culture and heritage. The event was organized by the Ministries of Culture and Tourism and the St. James Municipal Corporation. 1.5 million tourists are projected to have visited Jamaica in this winter tourist season, which began in December and ends this month. Of that number, stopover is to account for 900,000 tourists, which is to be the highest figure for a single winter season. Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett says this is expected to account for earnings in excess of 1.6 million US dollars. And you're trending to earn 4 billion, which would be well ahead of the projections that we've made. The minister provided the latest figures at Saturday night's Tourism Service Excellence Awards. Half Moon Hotel was double winner. The hotel won the Best Organization category, while its training manager, Conroy Thompson, was named Tourism's Best Employee. Nineteen finalists vied for top prizes and awards in the competition, which is organized by the tourism product development company, TPDCO. The Transport Authority has issued a stern warning to unlicensed operators, who they say will be prosecuted if they are found in breach of the law. Under Section 61, Subsection 1 of the Road Traffic Act, operating a public passenger vehicle without a road license is illegal. Among other things, guilty persons may have their vehicles seized for the offense. The Transport Authority has indicated that it will be working with the police in a zero-tolerance crackdown on illegal practices. 
The authority released a statement on Wednesday urging unlicensed operators to immediately desist and comply with the law. In the meantime, the Transport Authority is urging commuters to use only licensed public passenger vehicles. The statement warns that commuters who use these vehicles face the risk of traveling with operators who have not been registered or trained by the authority, may not have passed criminal background checks, lack the required public passenger vehicles insurance, and who may potentially be dangerous. Licensed public passenger vehicles should have red license plates and bear a blue and white Transport Authority sticker on their windscreen with a 2020 or later expiration date. And finally, Prime Minister Andrew Holness is reiterating his call for motorists to be more vigilant on the nation's roads. Mr. Holness's call follows statistics released by the Road Safety Unit, which reports that there have been more than 100 road fatalities since the start of the year. Up to April 4, 108 persons, including 97 males and 11 females, have lost their lives due to road crashes. Persons in the 20 to 34-year-old age group were most affected. Westmoreland recorded the most deaths, followed by Manchester and Trelawney. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.